what's going on people another thursday evening in the hood the neighborhood that is just thumbing through one of our old magazines i had here old stuff in here all right enough of that how's everyone doing tonight can everybody hear me okay Somebody pop up there and tell me if they can hear me okay. Hopefully going to keep it a little shorter than usual tonight. Um, having a having some throat problems. Don't know if it started today. And if I talk a lot, I start coughing or something. So I'm going to have to drink some water here and there. Um, <clears throat> I've got several states in here tonight. Good deal. Good deal, the more the merrier. Alright, um, like I said in the earlier post, this is going to be a little video over just basic tire care, tire maintenance, you know, mounting, balancing, uh, getting them ready to prep. I'm not going to go over, you know, preps because there's just so many different, different types, different name brands. You know, they're all kind of based off the same chemicals, but they work a little different. So, I'm, um, <laughs> I'm not going to uh, get into you know actual preps. I'll I'll get into preparing the tire for prep and and ways to prep it, um, and things to do before and after the race that'll you know help you out a lot with with helping your tires last longer. You know this is this is basic stuff for a lot of you people that's been you know racing for a while, um, but some of the some of the newbies that's you know just starting out or or um you've been racing for a little while and just ain't had the people to 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 help them along that's kind of what this is for um showing you you know why it's important to to mount tires a certain way why it's important um to size them how to size them um ways to you know if you're having problems getting the beads to seat and stuff like that just to kind of help the newbies and the ones that don't know along so if this is you know ba too basic for you you can watch along or Catch you on another video, but whatever. Um, go ahead and get started here. Um, we're going to be using tonight just your basic Maxxis EL tire. That's something we had on the shelf. I just grabbed one before we left. And um, these tires are run a lot in the um, in the like the the beginner classes, like the the Predator, the True Box Stocks, um, um, what they call budget classes. That's what this tire is originally designed for. What it was brought in for. Uh, budget racing is a very very hard compound uh, chemicals you know you, we got chemicals now that'll soften them up put a lot of bite into them but unlike you know pinks and blues and and, and hoosiers and burruses and vegas you don't really want to soften these tires a lot um and that's why i chose this tire to to, to work with tonight um because a lot of the newbies are in the beginner class they're in the predator class i help some people here at our local tracks that are just getting started um you know not really knowing where to go you have to you know like i've said in other videos you got to kind of watch you know who you ask and what you ask at a racetrack because some people's going to help you i mean this is you know this this sport there's a lot of people on there that will jump in and really help you and get you going but then there's some that's going to kind of lead you in the right direction not give you everything you need to know um that's where people like me come in we're going to tell you whatever you need to know because that's what we do but with your basic Maxxis EL tire, I'm going to go over mounting them first because that's the first thing you do with them. You, know, you go buy your new set of tires. Um, a lot of people like to, like to match the codes on these tires. This is something that a lot of people ain't going to tell you. The code is right here. You can see it. And basically what most people go by is the last four numbers, you know, which in this one is 1357. And um, a lot of people like to at least match the right sides and the left rear. Um, I haven't found where that's extremely important, especially in Saturday night racing. But what these are, these are manufacturer numbers. And this is, you know, codes on you know, what machine it was made on, what day it was made on. And you just kind of like to get stuff that was made on the same day with the same machine. Because if there's any differences in them, 
it won't be as bad if the numbers are matched and it just 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 helps you a little bit especially with you know big national level racing you know matching numbers is still a really big thing and it really helps a lot on them but saturday nighters it's not as important so um get your tires match your numbers if you can if not it's no big deal for saturday night racers um mounting You want to start with good wheels. I'm not saying you got to have brand new wheels, um, but you want to have good wheels that are not bent up, that are not warped, um, you know, ain't been road hard and put up wet. And the first thing you're going to do, I left the tool in my pocket. I'm sorry. I just thought about it. So the one night I actually wear pants during a video, I got to pull something out of my pocket. <laughs> This is a, a valve core remover. This removes the center of the valve core. And then this is important with mounting um, because you want to be able to put air in it, but you don't want it to hold the air. And you can get them at you know auto parts stores. They sell them at Walmart. This is the simplest little tool made. I got some you know more fancy ones than this, but this is just a basic, simple core tool removal or removal tool just like normal bolts and screws, lefty loosey, righty tighty. And hold on to these things, especially if the tire's got air in it, because if you try to take them out with air in the tire, they'll shoot across the room and you'll lose them. And I highly recommend going to an auto parts store or something and buying a you know a pack of these, a pack of five, pack of ten, because you're gonna need them later on because you're gonna lose them. I lose them all the time. Almost every time I mount tires, I lose one. Take the valve core out. Now. Most tires are directional. What that means is they're made to be, the, the way the cores are designed in them, they're made to be run a certain way. Um, does that matter? Yes and no, because we, we, we mount tires, most tires have a directional arrow on it. That means this tire is designed to rotate this direction, um, which means this would be you know, the outside of the, of the right side tire. And you want to put the directional arrow the correct way for the left side tires also. It, it matters a little bit, and you know, again, in big money racing, Saturday night racing, start off with them mounted the correct way. After you run them for a while, take them, and we'll flip them, and I'll show you how to do all that later on. But most all tires have directional arrows on them. And try your best to mount them with the, the proper arrow in the proper direction, meaning this is the right side tire. This tire is designed to run that way. That'll be the outside of it, so it would match up with the core. That's the outside of the wheel. And these wheels are offset. And you can use the offset to your advantage when mounting and dismounting tires. Um, typically, I always mount everything face down, which is the outside. You know, the, the valve course here, that's the outside of the wheel. You get your directional, and you'll start on the wheel. Now you're gonna need some type of lubrication to get this over the wheel. Um, I still use you know, dish detergent and water mixed up. And you don't wanna spray it in there, you wanna get like a rag or, or, you know, or paper towel or something, and just kind of wet it and just kind of you know, run it around the inside. It ain't gotta be dripping. Um, there's a lot of tire lubes out there that, that actually help work you know, with the inside of the tire. It don't, it don't um, contaminate your chemicals when you put them in there but if you use water and dish detergent just don't let it saturate the inside of the tire don't don't get it really wet in there just all you want to do is just lightly rub the tire just a little bit and you know you'll be able to it'll be a, you help it slide over the wheel a little I'm not going to actually mount them now um, because you know I, I sweat and cuss a lot when I mount tires um, just ask anybody at the shop um, but just like any tire you know, you'll it'll you'll work it over the wheel, and like I say, start with the outside down, and that's the small side of the wheel, which it'll go over it. You know, the 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 offset's a little shorter here. It's easier for it to go over. And then once you get one side popped on, take your rag, or your little whatever you're using, your 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 tire lube or your. Some people use WD-40. I've used it, um, but. Sometimes I've had tires when I've used WD-40, um, I'll, I'll blow them up and if the wheel, you know, if it's not a too wide of a wheel, or if it's too wide of a wheel, and I'm saying this tire stretches out, I've had them actually pop off when you let the air out of them. Um, so some people use it, some people don't. I'm not saying it's a good or a bad thing, but 
I like the dish detergent and water. Um, once you pop, see that comment come up, so I was just going to address it. Once you pop one side over, moisten this side, lubricate it up, and you know, work the tire over the wheel. You got it's best to do this by hand. A lot of people still do this by hand. I have tools that I can put them on with, um, but it's most people still do it by hands. And you know, you just want to work the tire on there. And once you get it on, this is one of the reasons why I leave the valve core out because I just take some air and just kind of hit it real quick, and it kind of pulls the tire out and gets it in shape. And I typically, you know, go ahead and mount up all four in the direction, you know, with my lube, putting them over the tires, and you got to work them on, and once you get to working these tires, you, you'll learn how to do it and how to pop them on. It gets a lot easier. But one of the most important things about mounting a tire is actually popping it out on the wheel. This is what makes or breaks a tire in a lot of cases. And it is a must, a 100% must, that you use some type of tire ring. This is the tire ring that I use. It's a simple, you know, this it was, you know, this actually belongs to a friend of mine, but I use it most of the time because, you know, we all race out the same trailer a lot. And um, all it is is just, you know, thin steel that's rolled and it's got a clamp on it and you clamp it down and it squeezes the tire down. And, and the reason you want that to happen when you put this in the tire band and you know you'll squeeze it down you don't want to squeeze the tire until the sidewalls begin to compress but you're gonna be you're gonna get it pretty tight on there because what you want is when you shoot air in this tire you don't want the tire to blow up this way you want it to blow out because the wheel itself is wider than the tire and in order for the tire to get out on the wheel past the beads and this is the bead right here that's what when that popping sound you hear is when it pops over that you want the tire when you shoot the air to it you want the tire to blow out this way and not this way because it will stretch the cords in the tire and it could cause it to be shaped funny um, it could stretch the cords in the sidewall which with an EL tire that's the weakness of this tire is the sidewall um, it's got a really thick bead on it they, they, they're hard to mount sometimes. They're hard to get started over the wheels. Um, but you got to be real careful because, you know, if you feel, it's got a really hard bead right there. And then you, if you push down, you notice it gets really soft right in there. Really soft. It's like there's almost nothing there. That's the weak point of these tires. That's what wears out on them. It's not the tread. It's the sidewall. Um, the tread, I've rarely, I've never seen an EL tire wear out. I've seen them... I've seen some feather like on asphalt or really hard dirt tracks that's been you know prepped too hard but what happens is these sidewalls right here they wear out and they start stretching the tire begins to roll under the cart more and more and more and begins to bounce and squeal and, and you lose speed but that's why it's important to use a tire ring because you can clamp it down and when the air goes out it pops it out you can also use your same lubricant that you use to push the wheel on with you know just kind of you know wipe some around inside the inside the wheel like in this area there'll be an area out right here just wipe it in you know get some on it clamp your tire ring down now you don't have to go out and buy professional tire rings you, know, you can you can go to Lowe's you know Home Depot they have this metal sometimes and you know buy it and I've seen people buy this metal and use ratchet straps you know just the, the big wide ratchet strap that's fine just don't use the ratchet strap itself on the tire. I have seen numerous times, numerous, numerous times, people at the racetrack with ratchet straps around the tire. And they'll put, the, put it around the tire, and it'll squeeze the tire in like this, and then they'll blow it out. And that could, that could damage the cords inside the tire. And the cords inside the tire is like the bones in your body. That's how the tire keeps its shape. That's how it keeps its, its rigidness on the racetrack and stays, you know, the footprint stays where it needs to be. You mess up these cords, it's like you, you know, running with a hurt leg. You know, you're not going to be fast. You're not going. This is what grips the track, and it's got to have a proper footprint. You mess up the cords, the footprint goes away, and you slow down. Um, so that's the that's the importance of a tire ring. Like I say, you can go buy this metal, and then use a ratchet strap around the metal to hold it in just don't use it on the tire and don't 
blow up tires without something around it. You know, a ring is the best thing and the only thing I recommend. Um, but like I say, just like with the ratchet strap around the tire, you go blowing this tire up, you can you can get up, you can get the tire on without a, a tire ring, but it's gonna take, you know, 80 pounds of air and the tire is gonna be this big around. When you get done, you're gonna stretch the cords and sometimes pop cords. I've seen cords pop in them before. And the tire's gonna be no good. You know, it, 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 you're gonna be just, you've been better off on old tires than you are on new ones because you've messed them up. Now, typically it don't take more than 20, 25 pounds to pop these tires out. You know, sometimes 30, depending on how stiff the beads are right here. And like I say, the EL tire has a pretty stiff bead. It's gonna take a little more air and some, you know, you, you, some good lubrication on there. That's where you, your uh, um, dish detergent and water come in at. It'll help slide it out over there. Now, there's been a lot of instances because, like I say, the tire itself, the wheel is, is wider than the tire. This, these are right size. These are 800s, and this is a 10-inch wheel. 800 means 8 inches. So this wheel is 2 inches, you know, wider than the tire. So the tire itself, the sidewalls have to pop out on it in order for it to fit on the wheel. That's the importance of a tire ring. That when you strap it in, the tire stays the size it needs to, and the sidewalls are blown out. That's the whole purpose of it. Um, and sometimes these beads right here, you know, depending on what type of wheel you use, some some have some really sharp beads on them. These are Douglas wheels. They got nice rounded beads. Some of them's got a sharper bead on it. They're hard to get over. Um, one thing you can do with that is take your wheel and you'll, you'll use an oven. And anytime I mention an oven with tires, I'm not talking about the oven in your kitchen in your house. Because even though these tires do not have chemicals in it, they're still made of chemicals. This is 80% oil, crude oil, you know, that's 80% of it, that's what this is. You heat it up, it's not going to stink, it's going to stank up your house. It's going to smell like somebody stuck a, put a skunk in your oven and, and, and cooked it in your house. So do not use your wife's oven in your house. There's lots of ovens. You don't have to have, you know, block ovens and tire ovens like we use. You can use, heat is heat. You can use regular ovens. You can find them on in yard sales. You can find them in, you know, local shoppers for 25, 30 bucks all the time. You know, the eyes on the top might be messed up, but the oven still works. All you need is heat. So get you something like that if you're going to use an oven. And you know, most times you can put two tires in an oven. Um, the one I use, you only put one tire. I use a block oven. But heat the oven up to about 200 degrees, 2, 250, something like that. With the tire on the wheel, you know, not blowed out, but just mounted on the wheel with the valve core out. Uh, we don't put the valve core in until the very end. The valve core stays out. Stick the tire in the oven at about 2 to 250 for 10 minutes. Get you some gloves, some nice thick gloves, not no little old gardening gloves like you wear out there when you and your wife's in the flower bed. I know some of you guys do that. You better if you're going to have a happy wife. But get some, I use welder's gloves, get some good thick, even mechanic's gloves at times I believe are too thin because the thing, the, the wheel's going to be hot. Um, the tire's going to be warm, but the wheel's going to be hot. And let it stay in there for about five minutes, ten at the most. You don't want it to get too hot, you just want it to get some heat in the rubber. Take it out with gloves, put it in your tire ring, run your tire ring down, spray some lube around the edge of it, and hit it with the air. That heat is going to soften up this this um, this bead just a little bit, and it'll pop on there a whole lot easier. Like Yellow Vegas, um, the Red Vegas, EL tires. I mounted some Hoosiers the other week that I had to do that too. Um, some tires have a harder bead. Now the pinks and blues, I've rarely had to do that with them tires. They got a softer bead on them. Uh, they got a hard sidewall with a soft bead. This is a hard bead with a soft sidewall. Um, but Anytime you're having, you know, if you can't get the tire to pop on there the first time, heat it up, it'll, it'll pop right on there. All right, and then once you pop them on there with your tire ring, you know, you'll get up to 20, 25 pounds, let the air loose. The valve core is out, all the air is going to come out. That's a good thing. The tire's mounted, it's beaded, it's seated on the bead, it's going to be fine. If it pops loose, you've done something wrong, or you've got something wrong with the tire or the wheel. Um, take it out, go to the next tire. Do all sets that way. And 
then we come to what's called sizing um sizing a tire is important you need certain staggers for certain carts for certain track types um most carts out there is going to run between seven eighths rear stagger up to about an inch and an eighth most of them are seven eighths to an inch and your front end stagger most people are running a inch and three eighths to an inch and three quarter um, and it's important that you keep those tires that size and it all begins with how you size them the first time what i do i use the oven again and you know i keep the oven around 250 and with the valcor still out i'll take the tire and i'll stick it in the oven for 10 minutes tops you know if the tire is still hot from the first time you may want to just put it in there for five minutes but if the tire is cold put it in there for 10 minutes Take the tire out, put the valve core in it with your valve core tool, and put some air in it. You ain't got to check it, just put, you know, five, six, seven pounds of air in it. And at Walmart, actually, these are better to be found at Lowe's and Home Depot. They're a little bitty small tape measures. I've been using this one for quite a while. It, it ain't hardly got no numbers on it to begin with. Um, this is a, what I use for a stagger tape. A lot of people use the cloth tapes, but if you heat the tire up and you put that cloth tape on it, it's made of vinyl. It's going to stretch. So I highly recommend going to get one of these little metal. This is a little three foot Stanley. I mean, it was four bucks. This ain't going to stretch. It's metal. Put you about six, seven pounds, eight pounds in it, whatever. You probably start with six, be fine. Measure the tire around the center. And typically on these carts, we're shooting for 34 inches on the right sides. Most of these tires are going to come in a little bit small. I've had, you know, some of the yellow Vegas and, you know, I've had pinks and blues come in. You pump them up the first time, they're 34 inches. But what I do, I heat them up, I take them out, and I put air in it until they're 34 and a quarter. I go a quarter inch over what I actually want the tire to be if I'm inside rolling it. If I'm not going to inside roll the tire, I put it pretty much dead on 34. Um, but 99.9% .9 of the time, I inside roll tires. And that's going to be my next discussion is inside rolling. But right now, we're on sizing. So I heat it up to 250 for about 10 minutes, put the valve core in it, I put air in it, and blow it up until it's 34 and a quarter. A quarter inch bigger than what you actually want. Um, the left rear, if you want one inch stagger, you want the right rear to be 34, you want the left rear to be 33. Do the same thing with the left rear. Heat it up. Put, um, something just fell. Heat it up. Put air in it until it's 33 and a quarter. And the right front, heat it up, 34 and a quarter. Uh, the left front, typically we run those around 32 and a half, so you're going to want it 32 and three quarter. A quarter inch bigger than what you actually want the tire to be. Set them to the side, and they need to sit there overnight at least. Um, I, I try to let them sit for 24 hours, but 12 hours is good. Um, or, you know, do them at one night and come home the next night and start your inside rolling if you're going to do that. You don't have to inside roll tires, but it really helps the life of the tire and the characteristics of the tire if you inside roll it. Um, when you come back from work the next day, you go work on the tires. Uh, if you're going to inside roll them, you have to have... There is a right way and a wrong way to roll tires also. Rolling tires means we're putting chemicals inside the tire. Yeah, woo, chemicals inside the tire. Um, easiest way to do it, once again, taking your valve core tool, it's a very important tool. Um, your tires have been sitting there overnight and they've cooled off. And what you've done with heating up these the tires, you've heated the, the cords and you put more air in it than you know and sized it bigger than what you actually need because when you when you inside roll it it's going to shrink just a little bit usually around a quarter of an inch on most tires you heat it up and when it cools it relaxes the cords and just like most anything else that we make when you heat something up and put it in a certain position and it cools like metal it stays in that position these cords are about the same way you heat them up stretch them out to a little bit bigger than what you need and when you let the air out of it, back down to five or six pounds, you know, it, it's it's going to be, you know, between 34 and a quarter and 34 and an eighth. Um, but you've stretched the cords, heated them up, and now they've relaxed in that position. 
So you pop the valve core out, and I did not bring, yeah, I did. Get you some good old fuel line right here. And you don't need a whole lot of it, and you need a measuring cup. Um, something that actually measures either cc's or ounces. Most people this day and time has gone to cc's, don't know why, 30 cc's is one ounce. So I still use ounces. Um, say we're going to put three ounces of chemical on the tire. You measure out, this is just a cup of water here, you measure out your three ounces and you take this fuel line and it fits directly on the valve core. Voila. And you take the tire and you push it down and you do this on a tabletop and you got to make sure the tire stays level. Push the tire down, stick the tube down into your solution and just let go. And when the tire blows back up, it's going to suck your solution down to the tire. And this is where you got to be quick and you've got to be steady because you can mess up a tire very, very quickly with inside the solution. Once it sucks the solution in, remove the core or remove the tube off of the, the valve stem. And usually what I do is as I'm sticking this back in, I'm just kind of slowly roll, rotating the tire. You know, I'll take a piece of paper or I'll set something there that the tire can actually move on because you want to keep it upright because if you take this tire, I have seen people turn them on their side like this and put chemical in them. Well, you want them to, to chemically treat the tread area. Some's going to leak over into the sidewall, but you want to be on the tread. You turn this tire like this, put the chemical in it, it all pulls up here on the, on the, on the sidewall. And like this EL tire has already got a soft sidewall to begin with, and it's drowned in the chemicals to make it even softer. And one sidewall is going to be softer than the other. So it's very important when you inside roll a tire to keep it level. Keep it parallel with the ground. Keep it level. And as you're putting the core back in, see, I've already lost it. That's why you got to buy plenty of them. <laughs> I thought I'd get through the night before I lost it, but I've done lost it. My mind and the vial core. Anyway, oh, it's in here. I'm going to put it back in. <laughs> like I said, as you take the tube off, when the tire pops up and sucks the solution in, while I'm putting the vial core in, I'm slowly rotating the tire. You know, just real slowly. And you put the vial core back in. Use it by the time you make a round. You should about have it done. If not, make two rounds. It's no big deal. But keep the tire level. Don't slosh it around. Don't pick it up. Keep it level. Roll it across the floor if you have to. Whatever. Once you get the valve core in it tight, then you're going to need to put air in it. And it's important not to have the valve core down at the bottom like that when you put air in it because the chemicals puddled up here. You shoot air in there, it's going to blow a lot of air really quick and it's going to blow chemical up on the sidewall. It's almost impossible to keep some off the sidewall, but you got to do everything you can not to. So I always make sure that the valve core is at the top. And I've got a air hose that I've kind of rigged. I use it here in my shop sometimes. that don't let a whole lot of air in there really quick. It's not good for popping the tire on the wheel, but it's good for this because it don't blow the chemical around. Shoot some air up there to it and, you know, roll it some more. Don't never stop rolling it very long because that chemical will sit and start soaking in and you'll have you know a soft spot. Shoot some air into it. Don't use digital air gauges. You ain't got to be you know 5.1, 5.2 like they run air in tires now. You can be just five pounds is fine or six pounds, whatever. Get you an old, just a regular old gauge and um you know once you put air in it Typically, I like to roll tires with the air I'm planning on running in. So if this is going to be a day race tire, I'm typically going to be anywhere from 6 to 8 pounds with rolling. Typically, I roll between 6 and 7 pounds. Most of the time, I just settle on 6. Um, but you want the tire to have enough air in it to hold itself up. You don't want it drooping when it's on the, on the rotisserie. <coughs> and here it comes. But like I can say, use your old gauge. Set it anywhere from five to seven pounds. You need the right size to be set the same and the left size to be set the same. So if you settle on six, set both of them on six. Ain't got to be dead on, but need to be close. Excuse me. I don't know what's going on, my allergies or something. <coughs> but um, you know, like I say, put the air in quick, rotate it. 
check the air, put them on five or six pounds, whatever, get them set quickly, rotate it. Now, it's also a must, <coughs> excuse me, this is going to take a second, hold on. Ooh. All right, let's start over. To have a tire rotisserie, and a tire rotisserie is a long <clears throat> bench-looking thing that's got two rollers on it and an electric motor, and it, it turns them really, really slow. I mean, you can barely see them rolling. Now, you don't want to roll them real fast, but you don't want to you know, have it almost stopped. I mean, you want to just barely see it rolling. <clears throat> a lot of people have made their own. Um, you can buy them. Um, I bought mine from um, Rebel Fab, and um, it works great. But you've also got to make sure that that, that tray that it's rolling on <coughs> is level. Good Lord, I'm getting choked up here. Um, because if it's not, the tire is going to walk to one side, and they're going to they're gonna bind up, and they're going to pop off. Or they're going to sit on level, and the chemical is not going to be straight. Everything's got to stay level in order for, this, for the chemicals to go in there go in there properly sorry <clears throat> this might be shorter than normal tonight because if my voice goes away I won't be able to do nothing all right now once we <clears throat> once you get the chemicals in it and get them rolling um hold on just a minute I'm sorry got a cough drop maybe that'll help all right once you get them on the rotisserie they need to roll my type of prep that I use now I don't know sign language I'm sorry <laughs> I can write stuff down and but <clears throat> they need to roll for around 24 hours um, most chemicals can go in you know a little after you know around 12 18 but I like <clears throat> dang I ain't, I ain't gonna make it tonight fellas try it again my voice is actually fixing to go away that's that's probably gonna be a good thing for some people they need to roll for around 24 hours to make sure all the chemical gets in good um, sometimes I let them roll all weekend they need to roll for at least 24 hours and if you go on the inside rolling I prefer they done at least five to seven days before they're actually run so if you're gonna run them on a Saturday they need to be rolled no later than Monday um, I typically roll the weekend before I'm gonna race them um, and then, you know, once they roll for 24 hours, um, you're going to need to sand the outside of them with some type of, of paper. A lot of people use, um, flapper wheels. Uh, some people use belt sanders. Uh, some people use, um, you know, grinders with, you know, little, little polishing buff pads on it with some abrasive. <coughs> but, um... You can, I've seen some people do them with jitterbugs by hand. You know, all you want to do is knock this little glaze right here off of it. That's from the, the molding, the, the, God, dog people, I ain't gonna make it. I can't even talk now. I'm sorry. I'm gonna try to drink water. If it, if it, my voice goes away, I'm gonna have to stop. I'm sorry, but um, throw it. Just throw it. Good thing I don't play baseball. <coughs> All right. Good shot. Um. Ugh. Dang it, man. Of all the times I'm gonna be losing my voice. And it's literally fixing to go. 
but you can use a jitterbug, you can use your hand, I, I've used a two by four, wrap the stuff around it, just, you know, you're not trying to remove material, you're just knocking off this glaze, this wax molding cover. The best way to do it is on some type of a machine that rolls the tire slowly, I mean, quickly, and then you take the, um, the uh, little buffer wheel or your um, um, belt sander and just knock this glaze off of it. Because what that's going to do is help the prep go in better from the outside. You're going to prep from the inside and the outside. But you want to open up the pores on this on this rubber so that the, um, the prep goes in quicker and easier and more efficiently. Once you sand it, um, you can you know, blow it off with air hose or, you know, or use some tire wash um, to, to clean the tire off and, and make sure it's good and dry. And anytime you, you use tire wash, you need to use an actual wash. Um, a lot of people use Simple Green, a lot of people use, you know, Purple Power or, or, or stuff like that. That stuff's okay, especially the Simple Green, because, you know, it'll clean the tire. It'll do its job, but that is a degreaser. And the reason I don't like using degreasers on a tire is because the tire is made of oil, basically grease. And it, it, it will pull, you know, chemicals out of the tire a little bit, you know, just... You know, don't don't wash them and let it sit. You want to spray it on there, wipe it off, and and then rinse it or dunk it in water or whatever, and dry the tire off. But a tire wash is a lot better. It doesn't remove the oils and the chemicals as bad as you know simple green and stuff like that. But um, man, this is rough. But after you get it sanded. Then you can start your external prepping. Now that's something I'm not going to get into is actual prep brands and, you know, what prep does this, <coughs> whatever. But with EL tires, they are a whole bunch of EL-specific preps out there. We have some. I have some mixes of my own. There's a lot of them out there. Now, you know, pinks and blues and your your um, your Hoosiers and your Burris and your, your Vegas, they've all got preps that work on them. But, you know, a lot of times your first coat on the outside is going to be some type of conditioner, um, you know, or, or softener, depending on what you want to do with the outside. You know, just like your inside roll is going to be some type of, con most of that's going to be a conditioning or a bite additive stuff. Um, we, we have softened from the inside before, but that, that tends to mess with the side walls and stuff like that. So we do most of our softening from the outside. You know, all the stuff on the inside is conditioning, bite additives to help the tire last longer. Um, now, like with an EL, like I said, you gotta be, it's pretty much EL specific type preps. And here it comes again. <laughs> Two of them and see if that helps. But the outside prepping, you know, that's going to be done weekly. Um, a lot of people, you know, the inside rolling is a one and done. You know, once it's done, it's pretty much enough for the life of the tire. Um, <clears throat> outside prepping, you know, after you sand it and clean it, um, it can be done a couple of ways. It can be done with a roller. You take your chemical and you pour it in a little container and just you know, spin the tire and roll them outside. That's putting it on really thick. That's really hard, heavy coats. And a lot of times that's what a lot of people use at the track to get something in it really quick and really hard. Another way to do it, which is the way a lot of people do it, is with these wax pad applicators. You can buy them at, of course, the Dollar General, where these come from. Uh, you just <clears throat> take your chemical, whatever you're using. A lot of times, when I'm using these, these are considered light coats. You know, people say, you put a light coat of this or a light coat of that, you're probably going to want to use this. And I'll get a bottle and... <coughs> God. <coughs> I'm sorry, folks. I don't know what is going on here. I talk all day long at work, and this ain't bothered me a bit all day long. But I'll take my chemical bottle and take the top out of, you know, my degreaser or your Windex or whatever, and most of them will screw right in and take it and spray on this applicator pad. And you're not wasting a lot, and you're getting good you know, coverage, and then just, you know, wipe the outside of the tire with it. And people say, you know, you can do two to four coats a week of whatever your conditioner is, whatever your outside prep is, not getting into that. Um, but one coat of this is usually about two coats of this. So just keep that in mind. And people say you need two to four coats. 
A lot of times they're talking about two to four coats of this, not this. But, you know, that's up to whatever kind of prep you use, whatever program you own, whatever they want you to do. Um, but typically, <clears throat> you're going to do the majority of your outside prep the day of the, the week of the race, sometime in the middle toward the latter of the week. You know, typically I like to, to, to prep on uh, Tuesdays, Thursday, and Friday. And that way, my chemicals are in the tire, they're fresh, and you need a little day in between your first actual coat for everything to soak in and, 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 and get blended in good before you go doing your heavier coats. And then, <clears throat> a lot of times, we'll use something a little different at the track, which is the chemical that people say, you know, you're firing off the tire. We'll use a chemical that, you know, don't really soak in good. It's not a conditioner. It's not really a bite additive. It's just something that helps the tire grip really fast, really quickly, because heat is what activates the prep in the tire and you want that tire to get out there and get hot pretty quick so that your inside prep and your weekly prep that you've done to the outside reacts and begins working on the tire and you hear a lot of instances where people's they start up front and they take off and they run in good and they have a caution and all of a sudden they just go to the back because the other tires didn't fire well that's that's the chemical we put on the outside there at the track it helps that inside work that you've done during the you know the week before and the outside work you're doing the week of helps it react and, and, and start 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 gripping and, and, and getting in the track like it should. You know, and that's that's just different different uh, ways to work the tire. You need to get with somebody that's got a program that um that, that knows your local tracks or knows these tires and and and, and stay on a program. Because these tires, especially ELs, they, they don't like to have several different preps put on. If you start out with something, you kind of need to stay on that because <clears throat> say you're using an FTS product and then you go to, I don't know, Southern Comfort or something like that. Sometimes those preps won't work together and it, it just, it messes up the tire, messes up the compound. I mean, the, the, the way the rubber works. And anytime you put a chemical on this rubber, it changes the way the rubber is permanently. And <clears throat> so a lot of times other preps won't work on top of you know what you've already done. And then you got, you know, conditioning preps, you got bite preps, you got softening preps. And that's why I want to get into the prepping thing, because that's a that's a two hour discussion in itself. Um you know, then you know once once you get to the track, you get your program down and you, you get your at the track prep and you get your during the week prep, your conditioning, and then you're gonna wash the tire. You know, when you come off the track, you know, you gotta prep at the track. And you got to take that tire off, and you know, whether it's muddy or it's just dust or whatever, you got to wash that tire. And that's where the tire wash comes in again. Um, you're going to want to <clears throat> have a, a specific type tire wash that is designed to wash tires. Again, the simple green and stuff like that is, is good, but remember, it does pull some of your prep out of the tire. And you know, you'll have to you know, prep a little heavier or change your program or whatever, but the stuff like from FTS has got a tire wash. Track Tech's got a good tire wash, the blue tire wash. There's a lot of people out there that got tire washes that work really good. And it's really, you know, it helps you a lot to use them. They'll clean the tire really good. And, you know, you need a water bucket, clean your tire, use a Brillo pad or a scrub brush and really scrub the tire good and then use a towel to dry it off. Once it's dry, then you can do, you know, whatever you need to do at the track. You can need to do some more conditioning, you need to add bite, you need to just put something on it later on to fire it off, but you need to make sure the tire is clean and dry before you start doing any prep work at the track. You do this through the night, whether you got one set of tires, two, three, whatever. Um, at the end of the night, when you get done racing, it's also important to wash your tires before you leave the track <clears throat> because that dirt on them will, you know, the reason you're washing these tires is just like the reason you're sanding them. That dirt gets down there and, 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 and keeps the prep from going in the tire like it needs to. Like some of the preps you use at, at, you know, during the week, you wipe it on and it goes in, and now I'm getting interrupted. What's up, buddy? <clears throat> what are you doing? What? You, look what I'm doing. What is this? Um, it's a tire. That's a tire. That's right. <clears throat> I, mean, I shouldn't have showed you this now. You're going to want this tire. I'm going to lose my tire. Well, come get it. Just give me a minute to drink some water, y'all. I'm sorry. I know this is, is, is aggravating, but just put him down, baby. He's fine. <clears throat> but to come get this tire, you gotta come say hey to everybody. 
Say hey, everybody. Yeah. Say hey, everybody. You want to put it on your head? This is a brand new no, off the no, shelf no, tire. There's no, no, no chemicals no. on it. No. You don't want it on your head? Oh, yes. Who is that right there? Is that a monkey? Yeah. It's a monkey. Don't smile at them. Don't smile at them. <laughs> no, my tire. Uh, my this, is, tire. this is your tire now. Uh, you heard that, Hunter. This is his tire now, so I guess you just bill me for it later. All right. You gonna be gone? <coughs> Nothing to say bye? Bye. He whispered it. Bye. <coughs> okay, now that my tire is gone, um, I guess um, I can just use the wheel. All right, let's pretend there's a tire on here because now my son just stole it. Um, anyway, it's in, you know, just like with sanding the tire, you're going to want to keep them, keep them clean because that dirt will get in there and it'll stop up the, the, um, the pores in the tires and the chemical won't go in as quick. And as I was saying before I got interrupted, that there's some chemicals you use at the, you know, during the week that you wipe it on the tire and it goes in real quick and it soaks right in, you know, and dries quickly. And you use it, you know, after you run the tire and, and it kind of sits on the top and the tire feels kind of greasy. That's because the tires, the pores on the tires are, are, are clogged and that prep can't soak in. That's why you see people at the track sometimes with sanders. And they'll sand their tires at the track to knock that little glaze off when they get hot and make the chemical go in quicker. That's not something you need for Saturday night racing. You just need something to clean the tire good. That's why I say use a Brillo pad because it'll, it'll, it'll scuff it a little bit as you're doing it and make sure it's good and dry. And then your chemical will go on your tire like it needs to at the track, and, and you'll be fine. But when you leave the track, make sure you clean them with the tire wash. And you don't have to prep them, but you, <coughs> excuse me, man. But just um, just wipe them down, dry them up, put them on your tire rack or wherever you put them at, and go home. Now, once you get home, another very important thing to do in order to keep the tires sized right, because remember we went through all this pre uh, preparation before of heating them up and growing the tire and um, to a bigger than they need to be so that when they shrink, they'll be around the same size. Now you're gonna have to keep staggering these tires every week, you have to check them. You don't have to do all this, you know, heating and cooling and all that, but you do need to check them. <clears throat> and when you get home from the track, those of you that's got trailers, you don't need to keep your tires in your trailer unless your trailer is under a shelter or under a tree or inside of a shop because that trailer is a small oven and it'll get you know 150 plus degrees in there during these hot summer days and your tire sitting there with air in it that's out of the atmosphere which has moisture in it which will cause that um tire to grow and will throw your staggers off and it also you know, it, it heats the tire up and it can it can affect the chemicals in it and stuff like that but the biggest thing is it makes them swell so I tell people to, you know, either put it under a tree, under a shelter, or, you know, Sunday, you know, you, you can leave them in there overnight, and the next day, come out there and just take them out and put them in your shop. And, you know, if you're going to race the next week, you know, you can, you know, Monday or Tuesday, get your tires out, you know, put your five and six air in them, or six and seven, or whatever you run in them, and recheck your stacker, you know, with your little gauge around the center. <clears throat> if they've shrunk a little bit, you can add a little air to them, let them sit for a while, and they'll kind of, you know, pop back out. But most of the time, once you get a tire sized, it's going to stay within a sixteenth of it if you've done it right, pretty much until it's wore out. You know, which is a couple, three races if you want to wear them completely out. Now, as they wear, they will shrink because the rubber is leaving off of them. But stagger is something you're going to have to check weekly. You know, and and. Another thing is people that race out the back of their truck. I race out the back of my truck all the time. I still do it quite often. When you go into the racetrack, have your tires covered up. You know, I've used garbage bags before. The black garbage bags, just stuff them in it. Because going down the road, that sun is just blaring down on those tires. And, you know, it can evaporate the chemical off of them or it can cause them to swell. It can cause them to shrink. It can cause all kinds of things. The sunlight is really rough on these if they're in there for if they're in the sunlight for a long period of time. So just stuff them in a box, you know, stuff them in a garbage bag, or, or you know, just hide them from the sun. You know, heat, direct heat, a lot of heat is not good for these tires. Um, and sometime during the week, you know, before you go race again, it, it wouldn't hurt you know, to resand them. You know, just lightly scuff them. 
um that's where I, I that's where i've taken you know a two by four and you know some you know some mild paper and just kind of you know run over them just kind of scuff them clean them up and then start your prepping program again you know whether you're using conditioner or bite additive or softener during the week whatever you're using you know you start your program whether it be you know, on tuesdays and thursdays or, or or you know tuesdays thursdays and fridays like i do or whatever you got to you got to keep the chemical on the tire you got to keep the tire sand you got to keep the tire clean you got to keep the tire size this is all important if you're going to you know, be competitive um you're checking the, you're restaggering them making sure your stagger stays right you may have to you know go up a pound for a couple of days and go down a pound a couple of days kind of stretch and shrink the tire just a little bit to kind of keep that tire where it needs to be i mean you can ask the guys at the shop you know i, I work on my tires right out here and people come in all the time and i'm working on tires and showing them what i'm doing you know, I don't try to hide it at the back and this, that, and the other. Folks walk in, I'm working on tires. I don't stop. I just keep right on going unless they need me to do something. That's just, you know, to show them that it takes, and I don't race a lot. You know, I've, I've raced, you know, twice in the past month, and I didn't race for, I hadn't raced since probably June before that. But I'll work on tires for, you know, five or six solid days before I go racing. And, um, you know, to show everybody how much work it takes. But if you're going to run up front, you're going to be competitive, and if you want tires to last, this is the kind of stuff you've got to do. Um, you know, I, I, I've helped out a lot of people here recently that bought new tires and new engines and all from me, and <clears throat> I'll prep them up for them, work them up, sell them to them, and they go to the track, and they never even wash them. I kind of take some of the blame on that because I never told them that. I just assumed that they knew. They, they've been to races and watched races, and wonder why they're not running good so i have to get them on a tire program and and help them out with it and and they slowly you know start getting to the front you know tires you can say what you want to about engines about chassis about this out now the tires is what wins races um, i'm an engine builder i'm an engine guy i make a living off of engines i don't make jack off tires we don't even we don't even hardly sell tires but tires are what wins races in most cases they got rhymed a little bit <laughs> but um you got to, no matter how much horsepower you got, or even if you're off a little bit on horsepower, <clears throat> if you can't hook it up, you're not going to do good. And if you're under horsepower and you've got the wrong kind of tires on, you're in the track too hard, you're not going to be fast because you're going to slow down through the corners because it's going to drag speed out of it. Um, I've had some guys bring engines to me to dyno. This been winning races. This won some money races. And they was almost a half horsepower off from what we're producing. But they're winning races because they're up on their tire program. They're getting through the corners faster than everybody else. And people's got a little more straightaway speed in them, but they're killing them through the corners. And that's where the races are won at. Um, now, we've gone over, you know, mounting and lube and sizing. And I've actually, for the first time, got notes. <laughs> that's why I keep looking over there and making sure I'm going over everything. But, um... Now, when you get ready to to uh, pop those tires off and mount new tires on it, you know, dismounting is, is just as important as mounting because, number one, you don't want to bend your wheels. And number two, if those tires really aren't worn, they're just a little past what you want. You can sell them to somebody else, but you don't want to mess them up before you sell them to somebody. And now that I don't have a tire, it's going to be hard for me to use my tools here that I got to dismount with. One of the most popular and still pretty widely used for Saturday night racers is a dismounting tool, you know, kind of like this. You know, it um pretty self-explanatory. You know, your tire, you want to take your valve core out with your valve core tool. Goes up and the mechanism, you know, pushes the tire off the wheel. And then you push off this side. What is he doing there? Same thing. Mechanism, you know, pushes the tire off the wheel. You have to kind of work this around a little bit. And, um, you know, but a lot of people still use these. This one's probably 15, 20 years old here. You know, we got, you know, different types. So this is, you know, something that I got also that, you know, uses a, a screw at the top. And this goes over the wheel and it goes down and, and, and knocks the tire off the bead. Um, Whatever you use, you need to use some type of proper tire dismounting tool so you don't mess up the sidewalls. 
Um, but there again, just like mounting the tire, you got offsets in the wheel that's gonna help you dismount the tire. Hello again, how are you? You gonna do a two time tonight? Hey daddy, I can't have a unicycle. I need another tire. I ain't got another tire, baby. I'm sorry, that's the only one I got. You gonna come back in here again? No. Well, come here. I got a roller, you wanna, you wanna go roll something? Well, you gotta come here and get it. <laughs> you gotta come here and get it. Ah, I'm gonna roll your head. No, 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 no. Alright, I'm almost done. Alright, roll on out. <sighs> Kids. But, um, oh, yeah, you got a, a short side and you got a, 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 a big offset side. Usually the big offset side is going to be the side with the valve core in it. So, when you pop these tires off, dang it, he, he took my tire. This is really important to show you this. Um, you're going to want to use the short side to begin taking your tire off. You want it to go on this side and you want it to come off this side. Um, just like with automotive tires, you know, we got tire tools. This is the tools that I use with that funky machine down there. Um, you want to, you know, get down in the tire and pull it up over and use another tool and, you know, pop it up over the short side. And then once that side comes off, usually you can just take the tire and bend it and this comes right out because once the tire has been run for a while and a lot of chemicals been in it, it's flimsy and they usually come right off. And then you follow the same procedures I showed you earlier about mounting. Um, but always remember the short side. Short side goes on, short side comes off. Um, that side is always down. That's the way, you know, one of the ways I remember it is Valcor down. Um, and the dismounting part I was telling you about, you know, about getting the proper tools is, is like when you want to flip tires, like with pinks and blues. A lot of times people run those, you know, locally. If they're prepped right on the right track conditions, you can run them about four races. You run them for two Saturday nights and then you flip them. You actually take the tire, you know, off the wheel and turn it the other direction and put it back on. So you want to use the proper tools so that you don't mess up the sidewalls, you don't mess up the beads so that they'll go back on. But you use the same procedure for putting it back on. You know, you'll use your dish detergent and water, you know, lube it up, slide it over the wheel, and you shouldn't have to heat it the second time if, if you had to heat it the first time because, like I say, once the beads get some, some heat in them, some chemical on them, they're going to soften up and they'll go on a lot easier the second time if you're flipping tires. But you still want to use your tire band because you don't want the tire to stretch out. Now, when you flip tires, if they've already been sized, I'd say eight out of ten times they're gonna be within the area of where they need to be once you flip them over because all you've done is just turn it over. It's still on the same wheels, the same tire with the same air pressure. You still may have to resize it. It always helps to check your tires every week after you race them, you know, the size of them because you may have to do a little bit of, you know, stretching and shrinking. If you need to stretch it, you know, a sixteenth of an inch, an eighth of an inch, just put a little air in it, you know, not no 30 pounds, you know, like 10, 12 pounds, and let them sit to the side for a few days. If you need one to shrink a little bit, just take the valve core out of it, completely out, and let it sit. And those cords will relax because there's no air pushing them out. They relax a little bit. You know, that's that's not the, 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 the proper way that the, the pros do it, but that's how I still do it a lot, you know, for tires I run on Saturday nights. Um, just when the core out, it'll shrink a little bit. You don't have to use heat. You ain't got to set them out in the sun. You ain't got to, you know, do all this funky stuff to it. Just add a little air or just take the Valcor out and it'll stretch a little bit or it'll shrink a little bit. Um, <clears throat> simple, but it's, this is a, this is stuff that you've got to do every week. Along with drinking a lot of water to keep your voice. Um, if you're going to stay up front. Now... I ain't answered a single question. I've been sitting here rambling and coughing and hacking and all this, that, and the other. Go back and look at a couple questions. No, I'm not going to Talladega Saturday. Actually, <clears throat> my son that just left here is uh, having uh, some minor surgery tomorrow, so I'm going to be down for several days. I won't be at work tomorrow or probably most of next week. But no, I'm not going to Talladega. Alabama.
I see one half of the strong arm racing team has been with me tonight. Need to get the monster on here. It would be interesting. <clears throat> yeah, something else about storage I forgot to do. Even though I took notes you know, of everything I wanted to do. <clears throat> if you're going if you're gonna set a tire up, you're not gonna race for several weeks or a month or whatever. Um I take regular WD-40 right out the can and wipe the tire down with it. And that helps hold some of the moisture in the tire. A lot of people don't like doing that, but, man, I've had tires last for, for weeks and weeks and weeks doing that. You know, cut it down with WD-40 when you get ready to race again, you know, take some paper or, or, or a, um, you know, a buffer pad and kind of lightly glaze the tire and then start your prepping again. And it, it works. It's worked for me for a long time, but... That's one thing you can do about, you know, storing them up. Ah, I see both halves of the strong arm team is on here tonight. Cool. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, the ELs are really hard to hook up without prep. Um, but I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the EL tires originally was made for spec asphalt racing. I could be wrong on that. I believe I was told that years ago that they used the ELs originally, you know, for spec racing on asphalt, and it didn't, series or something didn't work out right, and Jimmy Sims down there got a hold of them with the box stock project, and the rest is history. Don't use your wife's oven or her freezer. That's right. You can freeze tires, you know, if you're getting into cutting, Sometimes when we're cutting tires, I ain't gonna get into that about you know shaping them and this that and the other. But we have freeze tire, or froze tires like that for twelve-year-old Dunlaps. Ooh. Too much good info. I didn't give out no info. I didn't even get into prepping and cutting. <laughs> That's where the info is at, is, is, is ways of prepping and, and, you know, cutting the tires or sanding the tires and getting certain shapes in them, and I ain't even getting into that. I'm not going to get into that <laughs> too much. Not that I don't want to talk about it. I may do it some other show, but not tonight. I ain't got the voice for it. Robert, beer helps everything. I don't care what it is. Beer helps it. Oh, now, now Landon's getting a lot of attention. <laughs> it's gotten to where when I go places now and talk to people and stuff, they, they actually ask about my son as much as they do me, which I guess that's a good thing because, you know, it shows that, you know, I really am here at my house and taking time out of my schedule to do all of this. You know, I could be in there with him, but I'm in here doing this, which is why I don't do them as usual as I used to. You know, it used to be every other Thursday night, and I've kind of stretched them out a little bit, so... I have time to do the other things and stuff with him and, and Trish and all. If a turf 15 6x6 six six will seal on a 6x6 six six wheel. Ooh, I don't know. A 6x6 six six wheel. Well, if it's 6 wide, well... Is the tire 15 wide and trying to put it on a six inch wheel or so? I don't think that's gonna work. It's gonna be bu bubbled out like that. Yeah, Vega Reds are also hard to put on. Um, they're, they're, Vega Reds are a lot like the EL. They're a, a compatible tire. They're probably a little better tire once prepped, um, but they're hard to get on to. Um, but that's um, kind of it in a nutshell. I'm sorry it was so broken up with my voice and <clears throat> it's fixing to come back again. Don't know what's going on, but oh man. Um, make sure I got all these. But any other questions, y'all pop them up here. Um, you know, like I said, I didn't get into the prepping and and all that stuff. That's just it's too much stuff out there to kind of get down into how prepping works and this that and the other because there's so many different preps so many different brands you know so many prep dealers out there now that's got their own prep and you know it, it, it's just a complicated world and you know i understand the prep of, of why 
it um come about and 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 but it's just it, it's gotten a little little too out of hand my opinion this is my opinion but the prepping game has gotten way too out of hand you know and, and you, you can't go without it now because there's so much of it out there and you can't police it you know everybody says you know just don't allow prepping at the track well you know that happened years ago with wka and one thing we did they didn't allow prepping at the track and i can say this now because that was years ago we actually took our air tanks and took the nozzles off of them and poured prep into the air tank we poured you know if we had a, a five gallon air tank you know we pour a gallon or a gallon and a half of some type of prep inside of it you know and and when we put air in the tire we'd kind of shake the tank around and we would be inside prepping our tires at the racetrack so every time we come off the track we pulled a cord out of it you know clean the tire up and all and set it over there and fill it back up with air and it would be prepping the inside of the tire you know like that was back in the in the 90s we done that kind of stuff man so imagine the kind of stuff people be doing this day and time you couldn't even allow them to wash tires at the track because they'll be putting prep inside the water I guarantee you right now there's people that's already worried about that happening that is developing prep that mixes with water that will treat your tires while you're washing it. You know, if we thought about putting it in the air compressor or air tanks years ago, I guarantee that's happening. You can't police it. Prep is here to stay. It needs to be regulated a little bit more, but that's how a lot of people make money. So you're going to regulate people out of business or you're just going to let it run wild. I mean, what are you going to do? Um, I'm I'm kind of a fan of prepping. I'm kind of not, um, because it, it 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 costs a lot of money to do it, and there's a lot of people that's on limited budgets that can't afford to have six seven sets of tires. You know, they're lucky to have two sets of tires, maybe three, and they get you know a, a simple prep program. They run good on their local tracks, but when the big money racing comes into town, they can't race it because they have to buy new tires. When the money race comes to their track. The track changes because a lot of times the money race is, you know, is a day race and they're used to racing at night, you know, and you can't run the same tires you run at night in the day because they'll be too soft. They'll be prepped different and they got to buy new tires. That's, and, but even if they wasn't prepped, you know, you, you still couldn't stop that, you know, and you can't do a Duro rule, um, you know, because tires change, you know, every time they're run, you know, that, that's another purpose of chemicals is to keep the tire at a certain compound with a certain, you know, bite characteristic. And um, you get a tire, you know, I, I've tried this before, you know, because we, we tried to help them years ago with testing with stuff, you know, and we'd get a tire and we'd go run it like on a normal Saturday night, put it up and it would get harder every week. It wouldn't, you know, wear as bad because it wasn't as soft, but it would get harder every week. And you'd still have to buy new tires every race to get them as soft as, as where they need to be. So a Duro rule really wouldn't work. It'd have to buy new tires instead of buying chemicals. Um, it's just a dang if you do, dang if you don't. Um, but you know, the prep the prep game's here to stay. I recommend you just getting on a prep program with someone that, that knows your area, knows your tracks, knows your tires, and stay on it. Don't go jumping around from prep to prep to prep, because I see people, and I've raced with people, and I've actually told people I'm done with you, because we'd work on tires, or I'd help them work on tires, or work tires for them, all week long for certain track conditions, and they get to the track, and the track's going to come to them, but they expect the tires to, to be you know right there and i'm like these are or second heat race to feature tires they're not going to be as fast in the first heat race use your old tires or softer for that and they're expecting the tires to be right on and they might get out run run second or third in, in the first heat race and look over there and this guy is running a different type of prep goes over and talks to them and say well i'm running this so they buy a quarter of it start wiping it on top of the tires that i spent all week fixing and it just destroys the tires you know it gives it it takes all the work i've done away and then the tires are, are slow and never recuperate and they get mad so if if you were the new tire whatever chemicals and program you start with you need to stay on it until the tire is wore out even when you flip it um a lot of these preps out there are made off the same bases but the chemicals they put in them for bite additives or to make them 
you know, go in the tire quicker and stuff like that, they, they react different. So stay on the same program. If you want to try a different program, get a new set of tires and use that program. But you'd be surprised at how simple some of the programs are of these, you know, big racers that go around these that run nothing but day races. You can you can have a much, you know, nighttime Saturday night racing prep program is, is actually a little bit harder to do than this day racing stuff because day racing stuff, you know, the track is, is, is good. It's going to have bite. may get dry slick. You know, it may not come around as good, but it's usually going to be better than most Saturday night tracks. Saturday night tracks starts out wet, and some of the tracks right here, they start out a little wet. They get really good, then they go away in the feature. So it's kind of you know, bad, good, bad, and then some tracks get better as the night goes on, so a lot of times Saturday night prepping is a little bit tougher than the big money racing once you get it down, but, um, yeah, somebody mentioned Duro rule right there, yeah, the Duro rule just won't, um, it just won't work because, like I say, when you get a set of tires, if they're punching 50 out the pack, a lot of the tires we use now were Maxxis, they were the old blue tires, um, we used Firestones and we used um, Burris. This was before the Hoosiers got big, before the Vegas really got big. This was back in you know the mid 2000s. Um, but uh, we we put them on. We went to a track. We tested on a Sunday. The track was good, and you know they were fast. You know once they got going, they was you know a couple of tenths off, but it was fairly consistent. Put them all up. Went out there the next you know the next week and they was all about five points harder so we sanded them didn't prep them went the next weekend and run them again and they, they kept getting harder and the rubber started getting kind of funky on it like it was trying to peel off in some places and and um but it just it, it, doing a duro you have to buy new tires every week instead of prep so you know it's they got a lot of work to do and i hope that they kind of rein it in a little bit but you know, nothing I can do about it. It's just my opinion. But um, I'm going to keep doing what it takes to go fast and helping my people go fast. But um, get with somebody local. Get, you know, get with a national person. There's a lot of national prep guys out there. Um, they'll, they'll hook you up and do you right. You know, just stay with them and, and learn it. You know, just like a chassis. You know, people go out and buy these new chassis and set them up, expect them to go to the track and win the first Saturday night, and they're, they're off a little bit. You know, you got to learn the chassis. You got to learn what the chassis likes. Everybody has a little different driving characteristics. Everybody has a little different, you know, body size and body weight. They transfer weight a little different. Some's taller, some shorter. You got to learn what the chassis likes for you, just like a tire program. You got to learn how the tires should be treated and prepped for you because Joe Blows over here, he might be winning on his tires and you take them. They may not work good for you. They may work great, but you got to figure out what works for you. Just like with anything. Um, uh oh, what'd I do? Ooh, that's gonna block somebody. I didn't know I had that option. Hmm, how about that? I have got the power. Alright, and my voice is okay right now, but I'm probably fixing to end it up here because that's pretty much it. Um, went over everything on my list coughed and hacked and sneezed everywhere and like I say um, I'm gonna be out tomorrow probably through the middle of next week so you know you can still you know, drop me messages um, emails you know you can drop messages through here PM me through here or email me at uh, Jody at ARC racing.com uh, call and leave me a message um, I'll get back to him as quick as I can um, but it depends on how well his little outpatient surgery goes or how quick I'm gonna come back but um, got priorities first, and that's where I'm gonna be. So uh, appreciate everybody coming by tonight. And sorry I was <laughs> in and out so much and losing my voice, and it's fixing to go away again. But um, ooh, again, thank you. And I will be back in probably a couple of three weeks doing some other type of video. But uh, till then, uh, see y'all. Take care. Thank you.